The Renaissance was a period of time that was very pivotal and marked a shift away from the Middle Ages in almost all areas of life and toward modernity. Renaissance means rebirth and marked a time of renewal for many individuals. During the Renaissance, there was a pivotal and cultural flourishing of art. Many famous and iconic artists created spectacular pieces throughout the Renaissance, including the works of Leonardo da Vinci, Raphael, and Michelangelo. One thing that stands out to me about these names and the art created in the Renaissance is that many of them were created by men. The reason for the large amount of male painters is because artist workshops where artists learn and develop skills and styles also became an important space for socialization, where women were not allowed because of concerns about mod modesty and appropriateness. This is because in the Renaissance era, practice of life drawings, which were essentially nude art, became most popular amongst these workshops. However, there were exceptions to the majority of richer male artists, and some women would learn how to paint and leave a legacy with their art despite the norm, such as Isabella d'Este and the subject of this video, Sofa Nisba Anguissola. Sofa Nisba was born the oldest of six daughters, and the reason why she was able to become one of the first notable women artists in the Renaissance is her wealthy patrician father, who decided that he wanted all six of his daughters to be well educated, and therefore had his daughters train artistic skills at home and not in workshops. She grew up in a northern Italian city under Spanish rule, and also had a humanist education, like other elite children in this time. Alongside learning and creating paintings, especially portraits, that would later be known for their complexity and beauty. The work of hers that I will be analyzing today is Bernardino Campi painting Sofonisba Anguissola painted in 1559. This painting is a very complex painting of her teacher Bernardino Campi painting her. It is almost like a story inside a story, like Russian dolls, with a self-portrait inside of a portrait. Some have commented that this might be an elaborate joke that Sofonisba wanted to create. However, taking a first look at the self-portrait that Sofonisba made of herself, we can see that she is bigger than Compi, who is painting her, which might have been her way of saying that this was more so a way that she wanted to emphasize her own thoughts and have the viewer focus on her. Taking a look, we see Sofonisba in a fashionable red and almost noble woman-like outfit, which is different from her other self-portraits where she wore simple black dresses and white undershirts with a subtly expressive face. This painting comments on how Sofonisba viewed the world and the male-dominated time as we see her gaze frozen towards the viewer almost intensely, which might be a symbol of her observation of male authority on the body of the female and almost painting or shaping them in a way that they see fit which relates to the restrictions of women painting and attending artist workshops that I touched upon earlier. Furthermore, an extremely interesting and unique feature of this painting is that we see her draw a third arm meeting the hand of Compies, almost correcting him in the painting. This could be interpreted in many ways. First, the student correcting and becoming the teacher is a common theme throughout life, and this might have been her way of showcasing that she has finished learning from Compi and is ready to further her own style and take over teaching others or even feels as though she is better. This is different from her other paintings where she depicted herself as a contemplative artist, whereas in this picture she feels more able to depict herself as jovial, which might indicate her confidence in conjunction to the larger size of this double portrait as well. In person, this is larger than her previous paintings. However, this third art might also relate to the idea that she doesn't like the idea of men painting women and crafting women in a male-dominated culture, and her hand was there to stop him. The strong gaze in her third arm might have been Sophonisba's way of telling the viewer a snapshot of the male-dominated society in which she lived. Furthermore, this painting in general that definitely pushed the limits of the genre of portraits might have been her way to comment on the cultural restrictions she felt as a woman as well, especially in art. Once again, this painting happened to be one of her largest pieces, um, therefore she might have wanted this to be a statement piece. Looking more at Compi, we see a strong gaze towards the viewer and a very detailed depiction of him in action painting which once again might have been a comment on the passive object of the female and the active subject of the male. Sofonisba complicates the relationship by having Compi look out at the viewer of the painting. In this context, we almost become the active maker of this painting, once again playing the Russian doll effect. She utilizes Renaissance elements and creates the painting like a window continuation of our world with Compi's gaze and also creates a vanishing point where people pay attention to her gaze, a popular tactic in the Renaissance era as well. Furthermore, an element that is seen in many Renaissance artworks is the use of chiaroscuro, which means light-dark. 
and is the use of contrast between light and dark, between illumination and shadow. It is quite dramatic here as we see both the features of Compi and Sophonisba stand out against the dark background and the clothing on the two features. The significance of this piece is it showcases a time in history and gives us a snapshot of the Renaissance era. Overall, the piece gives commentary of women, especially female artists, gender restriction in the Renaissance era, while also exemplifying styles used throughout the era. This was an innovative painting in the portrait genre and showcases why Sophonisba was a memorable female artist from the Renaissance era. She was an artist that led the viewer to interpret many aspects of her artwork and invited them to think about the relationship between the artwork, viewer, and the artist. She was not afraid to push boundaries, showcased by this double portrait, especially as one of the few female artists in her time. She will be remembered as one of the most influential female painters in the Renaissance and can be seen as an early observer of the intersection between gender art and culture.